more than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun, but for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cycler. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Koenig and Canyon Sram. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. In day four, the finalists go head to head against each other. He thinks he's the fastest in the sprint. And then the pros. What is he waiting for? This is the Zwift Academy Finals. Good morning, finalists. Today is another double day, only in reverse this time. We're going to start with 90 minutes on Zwift, which doesn't sound like an awful lot, but remember, you get more bang for your buck indoors, so it's the equivalent of doing much longer than if you were outdoors. That's right. So we want to introduce a little bit of fatigue into the legs, OK, ahead of this afternoon's challenge, which is going to be race drills. So I need you to picture, if you will, the final four kilometers of a World Tour race. First of all, you're in a break of three, so you're gonna to need to race against each other to try to win, okay? And then, after you've got your breath back, you're gonna be teammates again, and the three of you are gonna to need to work together in order to beat a professional cyclist. Girls, you're gonna to have to beat Paulina Royakas. Guys, you're gonna to have to beat Matthew Vanderpool. Oh. That is going to be good. OK, now only you know what your race winning weapons are, OK? And you are going to need to deploy them perfectly in order to show the judges that you've got what it takes to win bike races. A very important skill to have. Good luck. Remember, you need to work together to beat the pros, but you also need to beat your fellow finalists. That's right. And I can't say how jealous I am. So if any of you need a slightly out of shape fourth teammate, I'll be waiting around at the cafe for you. You laughing at me? Oh, I mean, it'll be really interesting to see. I think, obviously, tactically, she's really experienced, so she'll know how to race and play to her strengths. But hopefully, we'll be able to work together really well and hopefully come away with a result. I don't know, maybe I can help Alex pushing her um, sprint uh, in order to beat Pauline. I've actually got a quite a good kick. Um, I haven't really got to show it during the week, so I'm thinking they're expecting me to go like early um, and try and get away, but I'm hoping to, for it to come down to a sprint. I think this is my moment to stand out and show the coaches uh, what I can do. It's, it's going to be seri serious now. Um, one of us uh, has left the race, so has left the uh, competition, so um, I don't want to be the next one. My name is Jasper Paradijs. I'm 27 years old. <laughs> and I live in Papingen, a small town in Belgium. I think my first bike ride was when I was five years old. I started racing when I was 12. When I was 16 years old, I won the Belgian national championships. Directly one week after, after that race, I crashed. I crashed very hard. I broke my knee, my elbow, my wrist. I was in a, in a wheelchair for four months. After several months, I was able to walk again. When on a, on a young age, you, when you win races, you are always dreaming about the highest thing you can achieve in 
you watch the pros on TV and and you are always thinking about how how would it be when when I'm a pro rider. In August 2020, I did my first race on Zwift and uh, and it was immediately uh, successful. I won that that race. I became part of an esports team. Herodians here now making a move as well. That's one of our Swift Academy finalists, actually, that just got announced actually yesterday. And Paradine's looking because to Jasper. show what he's worth out here today. Is Jasper going across? As a cyclist, you need a lot of resilience. That the Swift Academy is maybe a consequence of all the crashes and disadvantage that I that al already happens. I haven't talked about winning, I don't want to think about it, but I still want it. <laughs> Magnus, I was expecting a relatively easy session, but there's some quite punchy little intervals in there. Can you explain your thinking, why they're doing this? So we're trying to build up a, a certain amount of workload in, um, in the rider's legs, but still giving them enough time to, to recover physically. Um, you know, the Swift is a great platform from, from that perspective, is that we can increase an awful lot of workload in a very short space of time, um, which gives us the, you know, the outcome that we want. Okay, so basically they can train hard, and then actually have a little bit more time to recover ahead yeah. of what's to come. While still having that heavy feel in the legs. <laughs> While the riders are finishing off their Zwift session, let me give you a sneak peek on today's second challenge. The women will be taking on a four kilometre winding circuit race before sprinting to the finish line here at the top of this uphill drag. The men, meanwhile, will take on a flat 3.5 straight course. In both cases, they'll first race against each other, and then they'll team up to race against the pro. But what will this tell us about a pro cycling wannabes? Well, timing and tactics are everything at the sharp end of the race, so let's see if any of them have what it takes. Once the finalists were out on the road, it was time to tell them exactly what lay in store for the second part of their challenge. Okay, finalists, you've seen the circuit now, Magnus. So we're looking for a race between the three of you. First across the finish line, which is on the top of that little hill. So race against each other, play tactical games, whatever you want to do. Um, but be careful, uh, it's still open roads, don't take any risks. In the opening kilometre, Kiara has come to the front to set the tempo. She's riding quickly, but it's not enough to trouble the others, and it's playing straight into the hands of Alex, who is the strongest sprinter. This will be interesting to see um, who's going to be the first to attack. It's going to be that sort of... Uh, yeah, who's going to make the We're going to work together, uh, or are we going to just actually hit each other? Mm. Alex looks like she's uh, sitting on already. Missed a, missed a turn there. Yeah. This is kind of what I want to see as well, is how cool are they and... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who, who will conserve and who will mm. just keep riding the front. Like already, it looks like Yara's maybe been on the front a little too long here. These are strange tactics. It's hard to know what's going through Kiara and Neela's minds, as the longer they leave it, the more assured Alex will be of taking the win. This is why I also, like, it's really important to see, you know, how do they, how do they approach a race like this? I mean, it's ultimately, it's, it's the final 3K of a, of a road race, really, in the breakaway. Um, have you got that sort of, cool, calm, collected. Um, are you willing to lose the bike race to win it by playing the tactical game and potentially upsetting the other riders in your group by, by being a bit yeah. bit nasty? So right hand turn coming up with a stop sign, so just make sure you check, don't take any risks. Riders are through the town. Do you think they should be looking to try and get Alex off the back and do some work? Definitely, definitely should have gotten her off the back by now. Now, I mean, this is more looking like a lead out for Alex.
And I think, based on the numbers that I've seen, she's the one with the biggest peak. Mm. So as long as she survives the little drag, I would look for her to go first into that. That's a tight right-hander just before about 150, maybe 200 meters from the line. Neela is now on the front, but again, just controlling the pace. Alex is getting an armchair ride. It's really interesting that none of them, the other two have attacked or tried to get. looking back at each other, no. looking what they're thinking, just happy to sit on the front and... Yeah. You know, they're pressing on quite a bit, so... Oh, they're definitely going hard, yeah. aren't they? This is interesting, so sort of watching them kind of push the corners a little bit. Alex was really good on the wheels through that as well. Mm -hmm. She's not on, like not, not left any all. kind of space. That was just yeah, I got this. Neela is not going to win from this position. She needs to do something. Parks itself in the uh, Kiara doesn't want to come over the top now. They have one to go now. Good line from Alex there as well. She you see how she took that, yeah. like she came out and then basically undercut them on the exit and was able to straighten up the biking you know, on the power earlier, which meant that she was on the wheel already when they were. Yeah, not losing any speed. No. Nella's just winding it up with Alex and Kiara sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one thing, you know, when you're we're coming up to that the final little drag, you know, so I expect Kiara to go, but... Yeah, I think she goes. Yeah. Alex going with her. Oh, oh uh, We've got to crash up here, we've got to crash up here. Yara is down. Alex finishes the race. Uh, I eat to the hand. Yes. Okay. It's a horrible way to finish, and everyone, riders, teams, and even the crew, are shaken. But already, it's time for the guys. You just are an individual rider in the next race, all against each other. We expect something really tactical. You know the course. Yeah, we'll see who wins. Okay, let's go. Oh, this will be cool. Contrast to the women's race is immediate. No one is willing to push the pace. This is a game of cat and mouse. Luca is off with Jesper on his wheel. Lucas needs to close this gap. Lucas has let the wheel go a little bit, hasn't he? Oh. 
Alley. The other one should attack now, eh? Yeah. Our Italian friend. I asked but I would play it a bit more cool. All together again. Come on, Luca, you gotta go. Two case to go. Aye, up. Uh, done. Come on, come on. Aye. <laughs> That was the moment for Lucas to use his momentum and launch a fierce counter-attack, but he's missed it. But it looks that Lucas is not in the game. He's just talking. Yeah, yeah. He's just in last position and he's just following. Yeah. It feels like he's got a game plan, a strategy, and he's not hes not moving from it, right? No. That was the and moment. He, yeah. And he stays there till the finish. They haven't talked, eh? <laughs> Otherwise, he would go now. The Italian is on the, in the lead, eh? It's Luca who needs to attack. He has the weakest sprint, so he's got to do something before it's too late. Then he has to do something to win, but we are almost at 1k from the finish. Here he goes. And Lucas only followed. <laughs> it's a gamble. He thinks he's the fastest in the sprint. This was also a moment, eh? Yeah. Watch yeah, out yeah, there. yeah, good moment on the other side of the road. Lucas is not quick enough getting on the wheels, is no, he? No, no. Come on, Lucas, you had a chance. 500 to go, you should. Yeah, this will be a final sprint then. And Jasper needs to bring my money home now. Jasper launches the sprint. Lucas responds, but it's too little, too late. I hope I have my money. And the photo finish shows that Jesper has taken it on the line. Now it's back to the women, and it's time to take on the pro. Okay, team, what are the tactics? Um, I guess that Pauline is a good sprinter. Uh, she's very fast. So um, Nele and me will try to push a bit uphill. And then uh, we can help Alex do doing the last uh, sprint for the win. Paulina, how you feeling? A little bit nervous? <laughs> no, I'm not nervous, but I just, yeah, I like it. It's, um, it'll be a challenge also for me, but um, yeah, let's see what they will uh, do. And uh, yeah, I have a little plan, so. I'll... Excellent, brilliant. All right, well, good luck. How are they going to do it? I would like to see them try to get rid of they go like one, two against Paulina. But having listened to them there with their plan, I think this this one, two, I think if it was Alex and someone with race experience, a second one with race experience like Alex, then maybe they could. Yeah. But I would say Alex again in a sprint. Yeah. It looks like they're just going to go for leading out Alex and leave Paulina yeah. on the back. 
So they must be pretty confident in Alex's sprint and not too bothered about... Yeah, now it's good. Okay. Oh. Just wait, Nelly, wait. There we go. Wait. Oh, then. Yeah. Interesting tactics here. Neela has let Kiara drift off the front, which will force Pauline to respond. Ooh. That was smart. Yeah. Come on, Nelly. Go, go, and go. Yeah, she needs to bring Alex back there now. If they're, if they're playing the sprint mm. card. More of a tactical one, this one, so yeah. <laughs> it's not like full gas. If you were in this team, how would you approach it to beat Paulina? One, two, one, two, one, two. Just keep going. Yeah. Obviously, we've had maybe two attacks now. Yeah, but the ten tentative attacks has not been fully committed. Fully mm. committed. Ooh. Oh, Pauline's off. Oh, yeah. Nice. Pauline launches a big move and means business. Kiara is the first to respond. Come on, girls. Do you think they were expecting that? No. I don't think they were expecting no. that, no. But Kiara closed it. Someone needs to go now. Yeah. Go, go, go. That was Neela's opportunity, yeah. yeah. Neela needed to go next. They have to soften up Pauline. And we've got to get into oh. Alex is off. It's Alex who goes. This is a big move, and she is fully committed. Interesting. Just don't take any risk on the descent here, OK? Keep it on the right-hand side of the road. Yeah, she came down. You're okay. No, sorry. Don't, You're don't okay. be sorry. sorry. No, don't. No, don't. That's okay. Yeah. I'm all the time. Okay? It's part of bike racing. It's, it's, it's you. Okay. Are you okay? You will be okay. Do you want to sit down? Just... Is she okay? Yeah, don't worry about it. Are you okay? I don't, yeah. I don't want all this filming. The post-race analysis has shown that there was a fresh oil slick on the corner and there was no escaping it. Alex goes down, leaving Pauline with nowhere to go. Everyone is shaken, but there is still one race left to run. So guys, here it is, the finish line. Here you can beat for the first time in your career, Mathieu. Uh on a road race, uh, keep it safe. It's a 3K race, keep it safe, but fast. You guys are one team, so if one of you guys wins, you beat him. That's the challenge. He's on his own in the last 3K final of a race. You guys are three teammates. We are looking forward for the race. Let's go. Yeah, come on, Porte Feibol. <laughs> Ja, zo gaat het ook, hè? Ja, alles. Ah ja. In 3, 2, 1, up! First up, and Lucas finally takes a turn on the front, and it is a big move. Van der Poel is responding and is going to be nervous okay. now. Straight out of the blocks, then. Attack. Luca goes next. Perhaps the guys have learned from the mistakes of the previous race. Luca? <laughs> two two Luka. attacks in the first 300 yeah. meters. The first attack was uh, Luca. Oh, Mathieu on the inside. Intimidating a bit. It's Lucas at the back, isn't it? 
Vanderpool takes command on the front. Can he keep the finalists under control? Lucas is letting the wheel go again. He could use this to launch the perfect attack, but no. With a bit of speed, ah, well, could have been good from the back, but he doesn't push through. To be fair, how fast are we going? 70. 70 k an hour. It's not much you can. <laughs> Please, where would you go? <laughs> so, Mathieu on the front, 70 k an hour. That's a good move, isn't it? <laughs> Special tactic from Lucas. Okay, someone's got to go on this drag, surely. Two case, two coins. It's Jasper. Jasper instead has another shot. Hey, he's pedaling faster than 70 RPM. Too easy. Bam. Lucas got to go. Ali. Ali. What is he waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> It just keeps the speed up. It's really hard yeah. to surprise him. Van der Poel is on the front. Luca tries one last move, but at 72k an hour, can anyone come around Van der Poel? Lucas is the one who's in the hot seat for attacking, isn't he? But this is keeping. Yeah, but he is always three, four meters from the wheel, so I don't know how economically he actually still is. He's just going to try and out. Or he is waiting his minute, his moment. We are 1k to go. One kilometer to go. Is that the end of Flanders? Is that Luca? Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, we tried to surprise a bit. Back on the front. 72 an hour. Because <laughs> this control is from the front. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that was good. That was really, really good. What did you think, guys? I think it was a nice effort. Yeah. It was fast. <laughs> I would have expected uh, a better attack from Luca, to be honest. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, but I think just much you yeah. gave them not much opportunity. No, but there was no real attack either. By keeping the speed that high, new money to spend. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. That Thanks. was one of your best victories, <laughs> I would have thought. Yeah, I had to go uh, pretty all out to get the victory, but I'm glad uh, I could win. I knew if I had the pace pretty high, it would be really difficult. That was my luck today. There you go, it was luck, guys. Well done. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks. Matthew. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. guys. Well done. After a big and very eventful day on the bike, the judges have a lot to discuss back at base. Okay, folks, well, that was a day of two halves, wasn't it? The Zwift ride and then the racing in the afternoon. Can we have an injury update first, Beth? Because, like, those were, those were two bad crashes, weren't they? Is everyone okay? Everyone's mostly okay. Chiara crashed the first time. She's okay. She was able to, I mean, got treated by the medic and was able to gather herself and uh, get clearance to go in the second race. In the second one, Alex 
unfortunately came down on the corner there in some slippery section. And yeah, Pauline had not really anywhere else to go but over the top. Um, unfortunately, she broke her wrist. Ah. And Alex has, yeah, some pretty deep uh, skin wounds, I would say. So she's waiting to see how she is. OK, well, fingers crossed that Alex manages to, to continue there. In terms of the racing that we saw, let's talk through the first race, shall we? How impressed were you, in fact, with what you saw, Magnus, out there? Well, I think especially Alex really played it as really quite smart. The other two were more or less happy to, to just tow her around to, towards that final little drag up towards the finish. Didn't really make too much of an attempt to get Alex to get to the front, which was a little bit surprising to, to be honest with you, considering that they know how good her sprint is. Alex especially was really impressed me with how she picked things up and you know that, that sort of split second decisions yeah really interesting and that was quite a sprint at the end wasn't it it was a long sprint but really good numbers as well so I, I was very happy with when I saw that yeah that's great then and, and guys let's start with uh, the race where the academy guys were going head to head we were talking in the car weren't we about what tactics Luca would have to use in order to defeat the two guys that have got better sprints than him. Do you think he played to his strength? I don't think so, to be honest. Luca had to make, make the race as hard as possible to have a real chance to, to beat the other two punchy guys. He didn't play it that hard, in my opinion. And it was possible, but at a certain moment, Lucas was a bit dropped, so it could have been possible, I think, when, when Luca would have started from the beginning. And Jesper was looking really good from, from my perspective. I mean, he won the race, ultimately. It was tight, but he did get the win, didn't he? I think he was the best cyclist race-wise. Maybe he was not the strongest, but he was the first at the line. That's great then. And then what about uh, Lucas? Because you mentioned that he let the wheel go slightly. It seems strange, and it's still the question, was it because of technical reasons that the gap was there? five to ten meters at some points. All of a sudden he was almost dropped. Okay, and then let's go on to, uh, to the race against Mathieu, which was, um, it was fast, wasn't it? Let's put it that yes. way. Um, some great tactics from Mathieu van der Poel, so you've obviously taught him well. But well, Luca had a good go. Yes, but yeah, in the end, Mathieu used the tailwind 100% uh, in his favor and he put the speed so high, there was no option anymore for the others to do anything else than follow. Did, has he spoken to you since then? Has he said, given any feedback on the riders? Like, oh yeah, you, you know, yes, but put up a good sprint or anything like that. He was quite happy with what happy he did. with the situation yeah. that he got. A bit easier for him to control it from, from the top, I guess, but yeah, easy is a, is an easy word because it was still controlling it with 57 Ks average. So, yeah. Yeah. There's probably not many people that could beat him no. in that situation, right? No, there was no way, I think, for the others. And Magnus, let's talk about the two crashes, shall we? Because uh, we've had a chance to review the footage and Alex was involved in both of them. Is there a question mark over her bike handling ability after those, do you think? No, I wouldn't have said so. Um, definitely not. I think uh, the, the first crash that happened, that was a racing incident. As the road is coming around slightly, slightly to the left, it was just one of those moments where they basically touched each other. Alex held it upright and unfortunately Chiara came, came down in it. So. And then, uh, and then the second crash. There was a lot of oil on the road at that point. Um, you know, I got out of the car and straight away started thinking, is my car leaking oil? There was that much on, on the road. As they came into that corner, um, they would have picked up oil on the, because they came from the outside, obviously, or using the apex, picked up oil as, uh, on their tires as they came across it. Alex's wheels both let go at the same time, quite a strange way as well. So she was never going to save that, let's no. put it that way. And unfortunately, Polina just came, came down over the top before the crash. Um, there were some very, very interesting, like, good tactical moves played by, especially by Alex again. Yeah, they, had, they discussed it and their tactic was to try to soften Paulina <laughs> and Alex sprint. And they were actually, all, like, they were really committed to the win. I thought well, that was the best option. And you could see actually Alex, like, was coming out with sort of more tactics. Okay, but, in, you know, always look out. Maybe there's an option for a counter-attack. Chiara mostly did the first couple yeah. of attacks and Nelly was not really doing any. Paulina attacked all of them and Chiara was the one that actually closed it. But then that was the perfect opportunity for Nelly to try to counter-attack over the top. And she didn't do it. And and you could see like Alex was like, this is, you know, this is the moment, like go now, someone go, someone go. And even though she was the designated sprinter, she's like, I'm gonna go. That's really interesting, because actually in contrast, yep. Lucas did the exact opposite, didn't he? Yep. We were in the car screaming at him. 
Yeah, yeah, correct. This is the moment we, we, we all saw it, and there were two moments uh, with a really good opportunity for him, and he just waited, waited, waited. And you, you've made a bit of money back today. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> is he allowed back in the game? No. <laughs> <laughs> bankrupt is bankrupt. <laughs> I'll ask you to go away and deliberate your riders of the day, and we'll catch up again a little bit later on to announce them. Finalists, fourth day of the Zwift Academy, and what an eventful day it has been. Alex, it's great to see you still with us. Really tough luck hitting an oil slick, but you got back up and you lived to fight another day. And Kiara, you too. Again, what a trooper. Got straight back up and carried on with the ride. Guys, your day was slightly less eventful, fortunately, aside from racing much of Vanderpool. He did beat you. But you pushed in pretty hard, and Christopher and Christoph did say that there probably weren't many people on the planet that could have got one over on him today. And then when you went head to head, it was a real close one. But after reviewing the footage, it was Jasper that took the win, and Alex, after holding up that little crash, you continued your sprint to take the victory. So congratulations both. Yeah, well done. That was some good racing. Now, the judges have taken it all into consideration and they have made their decisions for Rider of the Day. They have. The Riders of the Day are... Jasper and Alex. Congratulations both. Yeah, well done. The judges said that you committed to the day really well, you were tactically sharp, and you took the all-important victories. Yeah, right. It's time to go rest up, because tomorrow is, of course, the final day where it's all left to play for. One day left of Zwift Academy Man on, and it is so close. Yes, we're getting Rider of the Day today, well deserved, but it means that all the male contestants now have had Rider of the Day. Yeah, and it's the same in the women's, really. Alex, two back-to-back -back wins. Well, yeah, but she has got her work cut out tomorrow. I mean, they all do, to be fair, because the final challenge is a monster. They're going up the Col Dorates Extreme. It's going to be the last opportunity for them to sway the judges' opinions. But let us know down in that comment section below who you think the winner is going to be. Yeah. But it's like, I'm going to actually have to go now. Right. It's okay. What are you doing? Um, Play Monopoly with Kenny Tram. That sounds cool. Can I come? I like pro cyclists and Monopoly. Mm, no. No. Just no. Coming up. The remaining finalists face one last test. Before the judges make their decisions. There are so many other aspects to bike racing as well. We expect more from a, a World Tour climber. And we crown this year's Zwift Academy winners. The winners of the Zwift Academy 2022 are...